Hey guys, welcome back to She Gets a Podcast. My name is Shan, the creator, the host, the editor, the all of that. Okay, welcome back. This episode is tackling adulting. Y'all see the title resume build up because not all build up is good build up. And that's what I'm tackling today with you guys. So we can refresh these resumes. We can take off old things that do not apply. And reality speaking, you should have at least three different type of resumes for different sectors of what jobs you may look for because some things that you did in the past are irrelevant and some things that you did in the past, they need to know because they're putting this stuff through a machine and not directly with the business owner or HR first. And I just want everybody to be informed about what's going on. Job hunting today has changed. It is very easy to lie, embellish, and learn how to use different applications through YouTube, okay? Some people are visual learners. Some people are people who pick up things quickly. Sometimes people need like six months to learn something. And people aren't sitting at a job for 30 plus years anymore. Most people hate the job that maintains their livelihood. Me. (laughs) And people put their purpose on the back burner when it should really fuel how you live. Um, I think a lot of people are scared to completely um, support themselves with their ideas. I think some some people are scared of leaving that paycheck to paycheck to paycheck life and they're not afraid to take that leap. And some people don't care and they're willing to do it because they have a support system and they really believe in themselves and have the confidence to see it through. Your resume buildup is probably pure bullshit. And that's what I want to talk about. So let's get into it. Welcome to She Gets a Pot. Hey there, if you have a product or something to inform the people about and you would like to go ahead and run an ad on She Gets It Podcast, let me know. Email me at shegetsitpod at gmail.com so we can set this thing up. This spot right here can be for you. Thoughts. Have you ever thought that you're stuck because of how you handle money? Do jobs give you two week notice before they lay you off or fire you? No, they do not. They don't give a fuck. So have you ever thought about why do we think we have to give a job two weeks notice? I don't have to give you shit. Um, I've left jobs within like the same day. Just get my things, clock out, leave my badge, my password, my um, whatever. And just go the fuck home. And I don't my explaining why I left. Because you know why I left. And you have to be like a dick for me to do that. And I've left jobs where they didn't see it coming. I'm slowly but surely emptying out my desk. Um, I'm volunteering to help you with anything for the office. And you'll never see it coming. And then before I leave, I'm slipping my letter of resignation under your door and I'm not coming back and you did not get two weeks notice and my parking key is under the door with that letter the fuck you thought because a lot of these jobs think that you need them more than they need you and that mentality does not work with me <laughs> listen um it just it's not gonna work with me So don't come at me like that because I will not be here tomorrow and be very comfortable in my bed. Um, So don't let job stress you out is my point. How much of your stress from work is actually related to your health? Who has a pull over your life? Is it your husband? Is it your family? Is it your job? Is it your kids? When was the last time you did something for yourself? Okay, is it you that has the pull over your life or is it them? Do you give a job that would replace you tomorrow more than you give your family? 
think about all that shit honestly okay it ain't about me it's about you but we have to stop looking to point fingers at a job at a company that did not do shit to you but let you know what the job was what was the expectation and ask you to sign if you agree now if that job keeps denying your days off if that job doesn't want you going home because you don't feel well if that job doesn't want you taking care of your kids when they don't feel well if that job doesn't want you taking off holidays that are family oriented and you did the proper procedure to take it off (laughs) that is not the job for you because a job should respect their employees that's how you get the best out of your employees so they can respect you okay this is not even the start of the topic this is just a warm-up just so y'all can see where i'm coming from because a lot of you are miserable because you just not standing up in a position at the job that you work at and you should be what's the purpose of a resume The purpose of a resume is to introduce yourself to companies or future employers and show your qualifications and why you should get the job over the next person, okay? Bottom line, that's what it's for. Not for your whole life story, not for your picture, not for, um, you know, bragging rights, not for that thing that you did in third grade. It's it's consistent, makes sense, relevant information, okay? Now... Your resume can grab employers based on wording through a machine before a human sees it. Yes, a machine. Okay, it's called ATS, I think. And knowing keywords are important. It's all about bringing attention and appeasing others. But this is what I hate. I hate sitting in interviews feeling like people want a show and not the truth. We all know the truth. And the truth is I need a better job that's fulfilling, that's understanding to my needs and won't stress me the fuck out, okay? And most jobs today would rather you be single, have no life, be accessible by them at their beck and call. And that's unrealistic. If you want more balanced time, In a lot of these companies' eyes, you're asking for too fucking much. And that is why a lot of companies, instead of being human and treating other employees as human, they're putting self-checkout machines in the store. Okay? What's next is going to be robots in the store taking you to the aisle of what you told the robots you need. So as humans, if we don't find a way to be needed over a machine, we are going to be jobless, okay? Today's way of making a resume, let's do the rundown. You wanna pick a layout and a format. Personal details, avoid spam, um, and people stealing your identity because they do it a lot of time on Indeed. And they'll do it on LinkedIn if the job looks fishy, okay? Just put your email on the resume and a Google number, okay? Resume objective, make it simple. We all know why you're here, okay? Work experience, make your work experience list helpful to the job that you're going for. And mention your top soft and hard skills. What are those? Let me tell you. When everyone's on the same page, getting things done at work is easy. Make a bigger impact at work with Grammarly. Grammarly is your secure AI writing partner that allows your team to make their point and move faster. You can even save time by going from spending hours editing drafts to just seconds. Join the 96% of Grammarly users that say it helps them craft more impactful writing. Sign up and download Grammarly for free at Grammarly.com slash podcast. That's Grammarly.com slash podcast. Easier said, done. Okay, so your hard skills are teachable skills. If you specialize in coding language, Google Analytics, HTML or JavaScript, um, copywriting, 
sales funnel management. If that was something you did before or you know how to do, those are hard skills. Soft skills are more like adaptability, you're confident, you're good at time management, your communication is well written and verbal, you're creative, and you're good at problem solving. Okay, you need to understand the difference between hard and soft skills because people need to know what you can handle, what you're not used to before they bring you into that interview. Okay, after these messages, we'll talk about stupid things you could put on your resume, um, overwhelming details that they don't need, how far back you should go on your resume and... What are three F's you want to go for, for your resume? Just so you guys know, the new book on lulu.com did drop the weekend before Christmas. So if you are someone who's well into your routine of podcasting and recording and editing and dropping the show, and you just want something to keep you accountable from when was the last time you posted a video on YouTube? When was the last time you posted a TikTok? What are your goals? What is your SEO that you're targeting? Um, notes, you need more note space. You need um, a better plan as to how to execute. What do you do after you post the episode? What, who, who should you alert? When should you work on this? And, and just really scheduling yourself out to be accountable for showing up for your podcast because I always tell you guys podcasting is 20% of actually doing the podcast with the content. The rest of it is marketing and finding your people and finding companies that will be a great sponsor to the audience that you cater to. So check it out on lulu.com. If you don't know what to look for, just go to shambypodden.com and everything is on there with the links. <laughs> Table topic time. Table topic time. I have the do-it-yourself therapy stack. Check out tabletopics.com to see if there's a pack of cards that you can use with your friends or your family or yourself. All right. So first question, how are you, how are your problem solving skills? (sighs) My problem solving skills, I think, are pretty good. Um, I know the basics of technology. I understand how to prepare to be able to take care of something prior to me needing it. Um, I think it's pretty good. And if I am not educated on how to solve a problem, there's usually somebody I can call to ask. Next question. Who in your family needs to be in therapy all of them all of them all of them okay and when you take your ass to therapy be honest all of y'all need to go if you are a descendant of a downer and you are of jamaican descent and culture take your ass to therapy because y'all got some real fucked up thinking Feedback. Stupid things you can put on your resume today. Now, a lot of people keep saying, I, 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 my, 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 I, 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 all over the damn resume. They don't need to know. They know it's you. Okay? They know it's you. Okay? So try your best to write in first and third person. Okay? Don't put objective. They know at the top that's your objective. They're not dumb. Use the exact title of the job advertised that you're going for. Double space after your objective. Don't put no fancy borders on there. Don't put multiple columns. Um, Any number you put on there, the machine that it goes through is automatically going to assume that's your phone number. Okay? No hobbies. Um... If you did community service that pertains to that job, that would be helpful for them to get an idea of your personality. Cool. As far as like um, your college education, if your college education wasn't two years ago or less, just remove it. If the job did not ask for your GPA, just remove it. 
Uh, do not add any pictures on there. We do not need to know all your past duties at every single job that you had. Do not overwhelm the reader or the machine to not pick up, pick up on the correct words it needs to for that job. What to do? These are what you should do. Use a clean font. Cambria is a good one. Georgia. Verdana is a good font to use. Single space. One inch margin all around the top, bottom, and sides. More white space. Looks presentable. Looks clean. Big section headings. No pictures and no graphics. Okay? Unless... You are fresh out of college. It's for a graphic design um, job or a fashion job. And they really, you really want your resume to stand out with the type of paper stock that you have and all of that. Maybe. If it's like a modeling type S job, maybe you'll tweak it. But if it's just for regular corporate, that's not needed. Okay. How far back should you go as far as your work that's relevant 10 to 15 years, if it's relevant. Avoid poor formatting. Have a cover letter for the job specifically. So if you're going for three types of jobs, you should have a cover letter for each and just fill in the company name and the job title every time you update it before you send it, okay? I hate when jobs is just like, I need a cover letter, I need a cover letter, I need a cover letter. When I just feel like that job is not a job that needs a cover letter y'all know what I'm talking about but have them now um what did I want to say okay the fat the f's so one of them is not not really f but we gonna put it in there y'all gotta get a f on purpose and three to be exact and let me tell you the first one is the function of your resume the reason why you made the resume in the first place has to be evident the formatting of your resume has to be clean, presentable, and straight to the point. And how effective is your resume to the metrics that's needed for that job to see if you're a good fit? So I guess you're taking an F out of effective, okay? Don't, don't beat me up. And the reason I say that is because the machine um, detects through a system it must be able to choose your resume in 30 seconds or less based on the words that are on there. So if you are not putting the correct words on there, sis or sir, your resume might not get picked. Have you ever um, been in a mood to apply to different jobs and give them a resume and you're just like, I applied to like 15 jobs this week. None of them gave me anything back. I applied to 30 jobs this month. I haven't heard nothing back from any of them. It's definitely your resume. It's definitely your formatting. It's definitely not hitting um, the right ver words for the machine to pick up because people are overwhelmed by how many people are looking for jobs and they can't sit there realistically and look at every single resume that comes through. So they use a machine. So be aware of that. Bottom line... Keep your resume clean. Use LinkedIn. Be um, particular about what shows automatically on your LinkedIn because a lot of people use people's LinkedIn to steal information and make false information. Go to Glassdoor and read the reviews on the, com on the company, pros and cons from past employees. Research the company. Go to the company's site and see if the job is actually legit and current if they're still hiring for that position who has um info scammers indeed of course linkedin um you can report uh falsified jobs on them but they just have it back up like they're relentless um the scanning tool that most jobs use is called ats scanning and most jobs use that to grab the resume before a human sees it. So the software the software app that scans a resume for the job, it uses keywords and job titles and educational background that's pertaining to that job. It will score your resume 
from a one to 100% scale and you want to focus on hitting 80% and higher for that job to be picked by your resume wording. So please fine tooth check your resume over to make sure you have the keywords related to that job that you're applying for so you can be picked. Experience related to the career is what you need to focus on. Simple formatting, degrees, and abbreviations spelled out will be helpful. At the end of the day, I just think I said enough. <laughs> I think I said enough. I think you should always have a fresh new resume on Pivot. You should always be looking for newer and better opportunities and never quit a job without having a week to yourself when you're not working so you can prepare for that new job and having something lined up before you quit so your bills can consistently be paid. All right. Um, it's life. Don't worry about your boss's feelings. Don't worry about your supervisor's feelings. Don't worry about that company's feelings. They would do the same thing for their families if they weren't happy at the place that they were giving most of their time to. The reality is we give 8.5 plus hours to a job. Some people give 12 hours. Some people give 15 hours to a job, ruin their bodies, ruin their back. And then by the time they retire, what type of life are they going to live? That is the reality of how people are worked in the U.S. And if I want to speed this up, think about your retirement. There's a lot of people out here losing their houses because their retirement wasn't set up for the increase in state property tax on their house. So they're losing their houses because in the U.S. you really don't own shit. You have to keep paying property tax even if their house is paid off to taxes they can't pay because their retirement is not covering all of their bills. Their retirement is not covering the inflation and things in the grocery store. Their retirement is not covering the insurance going up. Okay. So make sure you're investing in your money and not just sitting it in a bank because they're investing your money and they're making money on your money. So you might as well be making money on your money, okay? And make sure you're you're putting your money in a property that's bringing in money. So you could keep more money. So you can make more money. So you can have more options. So you're not losing at 60. So you're not losing at 70. Okay? Be great. Update the resumes. I'll catch you next week. Stop breaking up with your bitch if you plan on getting back with her. Because if you find out by all the dick she was shaking hands with when you was gone, you're going to have a heart attack. Chad, take your ass to bed now. Get in the bed now. Somebody go tuck her ass in.